Hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. On this very dreary day here on the East Coast, it is raining, it is cold, it is disgusting. Uh, Jordan and Eric are down in North Carolina right now. They just got done uh, with a Trump rally yesterday, and I think they're still at this joint Michelle Obama-Hillary Clinton rally. So um, you guys should definitely go check those videos out from yesterday where Eric and Jordan talked to some just ridiculous Trump supporters as usual. Um, one basically said that Jesus wouldn't want a woman to be president, which really doesn't seem to align with uh, Jesus's love everyone mentality. Although really who knows what the Bible says at this point. It's a mishmash of everything. But that's a discussion for another day. Today is obviously a WikiLeaks update. You know that that's what I was going to be bringing to you today. The Desta to Part 20. Um, and also don't forget to check out our disappearing middle class videos. Um, they are, I think, one of the best things that we've done on the channel. And um, I just, we uploaded a video today of Jordan interviewing a, a man who it's been proven that the child was not his yet Detroit, uh, the Detroit j judges and the system there are still charging him with uh, not paying child support and a DNA test has exonerated him. So go check that video out. And then also, um, I, I did an interview with a, a daycare worker who's making not a living wage and to even continue with her job she has to go to school and then take out more loans so I don't even know how you sustain that so we're just trying to bring those stories to the forefront. Now to WikiLeaks after that intro. Very interesting stuff as always. This is a Politico article that really summarizes the Bill Clinton aspect of this story. So Bill Clinton was implicated in a lot of these WikiLeaks emails and his general sketchiness and his AIDS's uh, response. Doug Band was his body man, which is usually the main guy, their main right hand man when they're a president, the go -to, their go to guy. Doug Band continued working with Bill Clinton after Bill Clinton was done being president. And he has a lot of, you know, there's a lot of overlap as always with every little Clinton uh, project. So. Doug Ban is involved in the Clinton Foundation and multiple things, and he shows in these emails that that overlap between the Clinton Foundation, Bill Clinton, other Clinton aides is rampant. And he really is candid and uh, strangely aggressive in some of these emails. Doug Ban does not come off like a good guy. So I'm going to read directly from a Politico article that really sums it up. Pay attention because it, it can get a little complicated when you're talking about all these different foundations and this different overlap, which is probably why the mainstream media doesn't want to focus on it and they'd rather uh, focus on the simplistic stuff. So we're not going to give that to you, of course. Hacked Memo offers an angry glimpse into inside Bill Clinton Incorporated is the title of, of this Politico article. A longtime Bill Clinton advisor came under fire several, several years ago for alleged conflicts of interest involving a private consulting firm and the Clinton Foundation. He, uh, he mounted an audacious defense. Bill Clinton's doing it too. All of us are corrupt, guys. The unusual and brash rejoinder from veteran Clinton aide and 10AO consulting co-founder, that's the consulting firm, Doug Band, is scattered across the thousands of emailed ha uh, hacked emails published by WikiLeaks, but a memo released Wednesday provides the most detailed look to date at the intertwined worlds of nonprofit, for profit, official, and political activities involving Clinton and many of his top aides. Nonprofit, for profit, official, political. All of that encompassed in the Clinton empire. Uh, everything's political, non political, money making, all of that is intertwined. So, but there's no quid pro quo, guys, so they're not doing anything wrong. Right. The memo at one point refers bluntly to the money-making part of Clinton's life as Bill Clinton Incorporated and notes that in at least one case, a company, global education firm Laureate International Universities, began paying Clinton personally after being, the fir uh, being a donor to the Clinton Foundation. So, uh, once again, the donors and the Clinton Foundation have a interplay uh, and a overlap, to say the least. So... Basically, if you donate to the Clinton Foundation, eh, you're gonna get a little, you're gonna get a little, not a wink and a nod from the Clintons. Um, he just has this kind of uh, 
what, what is this? Rob says, finally, you're talking about Lorian University. Yes. So they, they have this uh, overlap in between, uh, in between the Clinton Foundation and their money making, uh, the money making aspects of their life that is not new to people. But I'll continue. The 12 page document prepared in November 2001 by band with input from Clinton advisor John Podesta came as Chelsea Clinton was pressing for changes to the foundation's governance and complaining that band Teneo co-founder Declan Kelly and others were profiting from their ties to the foundation and the, uh, her father and the foundation. You don't say. In the memo addressed to outside lawyers conducting a review of the foundation's governance, band insists that the relationship actually benefited the foundation financially by bringing in new donors. <gasps> it benefited the Clintons and their foundation financially? Hmm. In quotes. Cognizant of the foundation's uh, significant fundraising needs, as well as my role in the primary fundraiser for the foundation for the past 11 years as a partner in Teneo, Mr. Kelly and I have asked and encouraged our clients to contribute to the foundation, Band wrote. Through our efforts, we have brought new donors to the foundation and garnered increased giving from existing donors. So what he's trying to say is that um, he's just keeping the foundation's fundraising needs in mind when dealing with his uh with Teneo his consulting firm so it's not an overlap it's just the relationships that he's made through his consulting and that he's made through the Clinton Foundation there's no pay for play there's no pay to play here it's just we're all friends we're all doing business together we're all hanging out there's just a mild coincidence that we're going to be um work doing some uh shared business with Teneo and that they will be donors to the Clinton Foundation. What he what he's trying to say is there is no proof of quid pro quo. And as you will see, see later, Bill Clinton does it too. So shut up, Chelsea Clinton. Stop bringing this up. Um, the most eye-catching examples in the memo are uh, of companies that paid Bill Clinton directly at the same time they were donors to the foundation. Hmm. Band details donations from Laureate and other international and, and another international education firm, GEMS, I think it's GEMS Education, discussing them in the context of Clinton's business relationships. A quote again from Band. Laureate is a foundation relationship that evolved into a personal advisory services business relationship for per President Clinton. Personal advisory services, hmm. Laureate paid President Clinton $3.5 million annually to provide advice and serve as their honorary chairman. That's, you know, teachers, firefighters, they're not, they're doing jack shit. They don't deserve a $3.5 million salary. I mean, I, I'm getting a little off track here, but advising means you come in a few times so you have the appearance that you're involved in the company and then you just get paid off by them. Clinton was not going in every day, working really hard for, what, what, was, what even company was this? For, for Laureate, paying $3.5 million for an honorary chairman position and to, be, uh, to give advice. That's how, that's how things play. Uh, that's, how, that's how this works in this world, is you give advice and then we just give you a check and say, move along and keep us in mind for later. Because, of course, Laureate has... $3.5 million to throw around. <clears throat> da, da, da. Gems approached Bill Clinton in 2009. This is again Band's quote. Uh, to seek his personal services as an advisor to the company, Clinton A. Justin Cooper and I convinced them to initiate a relationship to the foundation, which they did. That relationship has grown into a business relationship for President Clinton and a donor relationship for CGI, Clinton Global Initiative. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I need a drink of water. Yeah, I drank my water from a mug. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Neither Justin nor I have separately compensated, have been separately compensated for these activities. We do not receive a fee for or percentage of the more than $50 million for, uh, in for-profit activity we have personally helped to secure for President Clinton to date or the $66 million in future contracts should he choose to continue with these those engagements, Ban wrote. So because they're not getting a personal payoff for this, then it can't be corruption. Uh, 
Ban's examples appear to uh, design to drive home the point that if his outside business activities and those of others who worked with the foundation were being labeled as potential or actual conflicts of interest, the same could be said of Clinton himself, who's, who had his hands in the foundation's work and also had a personal business dealings with some of uh, its donors. So Bill Clinton did it too, so shut up already. How then, this is a quote again from, uh, from Ban to Cheryl Mills, how then do we go through an exercise like this and WJC, William Jefferson Clinton, doesn't, as he is far more conflicted every single day in what he does? Why not apply the structure you set up for him in this situation? Ban wrote a few days earlier to Cooper and Cheryl Mills. Basically, wah, wah, wah. I want to be... A, as corrupt as Bill Clinton, but not get called out on it just as much as Bill Clinton. Um, I signed a conflict of interest policy as a board member of the Clinton Global Initiative, Ban wrote in an email to Podesta, who had urged Ban to tone down aspects of the larger memo. Ban said he reported that 10AO represents four Clinton Global Initiative sponsors, three of which 10AO brought, brought to Clip, uh, Clinton Global Initiative. There's no overlap at all. Oddly, William Jefferson Clinton does not have to sign such a document, even though he is personally paid by three CGI sponsors, gets many expensive gifts from them, and some that are at home. Sounds like you're a little jelly jelly, Doug Band. I guess being by his side all those years, you didn't really get enough of a payoff, despite the fact that you pretty much owe your entire career to Bill Clinton. You have no problem in being a corrupt piece of shit, so maybe stop complaining if, if the corrupt, uh, your corrupt boss is allowing you to be corrupt, but not get, uh, scru you're getting scrutinized a little too heavily for it. Your complaint is that you're not getting scrutinized, you're getting scrutinized too much for your corruption. Okay. Ban's longer memo suggests that some overlap in duties of Clinton aides is necessarily, uh, is necessary given the multiple hats Clinton wears. That's a nice way of putting it. We appreciate the unorthodox nature of our roles and the goal-seeking ways to ensure that we are implementing best practices to protect the 501c3 status of the foundation, Band wrote. The memo's footnotes also provide a more detailed response to a complete, uh, to a couple of key allegations against Band and Teneo that later, later emerged in the press. That a hotel suite arranged from the, for the Clinton Global Initiative annual meeting was used to host the consulting firm's clients and that some Teneo clients were given free passes to attend the conference. Teneo hosted 15 meetings in that room during the four days of the Clinton Global Initiative, primarily with the clients identified in this memo, Band wrote. I assume CGI sent a bill for that room, which I recently learned that we had not been billed. I, this is Band in an email. I directed that Teneo resource, resources be used and pay any and all costs associated with the room. I believed, rightly or wrongly, that Teneo's future development of its clients to be bigger, donors to the foundation and CGI, CGI was an important priority. That is the problem. That is a massive over, overlap that you're defending and seem like that there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You paying Tenio as your separate consulting firm, paying for the uh, Clinton Global Initiative hotel rooms shows that there's th the multiple hats that you're wearing just means you're wearing one big hat and that's the Clinton empire. Uh, a little bit further down in the article, this talks about uh, the dispute that the was prompted uh, that prompted the memo. The dispute over alleged con conflicts of interest <clears throat> at the foundation ultimately degenerated into a highly personal dust up between Chelsea Clinton and Band. Chelsea Clinton insisted that her goals in initi uh, initiating the outside review were to professionalize, in quotes, the foundation, build it for the future, and build it in such a way that supported Bill Clinton's works and moms. Um, However, she also complained that Band had agitated her father by pressing to preserve Tenio's ties. See, this guy's a greedy fuck. Including uh, in a phone call on the day Hillary Clinton's mother, Dorothy Rodham, passed away. I cannot believe Doug did this on the same day my grandmother died. Chelsea Clinton complained to the several top Clinton advisors. So, uh, kind of, you know, irrelevant, but Chelsea Clinton comes off pretty well. Like, she's worried about the overlap with the Clinton Foundation. She seems to be pretty woke about the fact that yeah this this is this doesn't look good for us this isn't good this isn't ethical and she seems to see that Doug Band is a symptom of the problem and also uh, an agitator of the problem which is that's how he comes off in the email he comes off like an asshole Doug Band 
soon thereafter, after Chelsea Clinton complained about him complaining about his, you know, Teneo not getting enough business when their grandmother died, uh, whew, soon after, Ban complained to Bedessa that Chelsea Clinton's demands for changes at the foundation were causing undue stress to the various foundation officials. Oh, so stressful, their corruption, including Clinton Foundation CEO Bruce Lindsay, who suffered a stroke around that time. She's acting like a spoiled brat kid with nothing else to do but create issues to justify what she's doing because she, as she has said, hasn't found her way and has a lack of focus in life. Better that she has a lack of focus in life than have her focus being on uh, continuing a corrupt uh, system and just trying to maximize your profits at the expense of even the, the man that apparently gave you your career, Bill Clinton. It's a weird defense of Bill Clinton, but Doug Ban just really, mm, not a good guy. Um, again, this, this closes the article. Same memo. Contains what is said to be a complete list of 20 clients Teneo was advising at the time. It also provides a year-by-year -year -year details of some of the major Clinton Foundation donors. Coca-Cola, that very, you know, charitable Coca-Cola, a Teneo client is listed as giving $4.3 million and pledging further $2 million over a seven-year period to the foundation. The figure shows, it shows a dramatic upswing in Koch's giving in 2009, which Band attributes to his and Kelly's efforts. As if you're not just, like, an empty vessel for Bill Clinton and that Clinton uh, empire. No one... Maybe you're really insecure because your consulting firm on its own uh, wouldn't have the prowess that it does because you're directly tied to, to Bill Clinton. Maybe that's why you're such a little weasel. Other big Clinton Foundation donors who were Teneo clients include Barclays Capital, <laughs> which gave $1.1 million over a four-year period, Switzerland-based banking giant UBS, which gave uh, $540,000 over that time, and the Rockefeller Foundation, another rich uh, rich family empire from the, from the past which gave $4.2 million over five years. Among the other firms on Teneo's donor list, the American Ireland Fund, the Allstate Corporation, Indo Gold, BHB, Billiton, AT&T, hmm, AT&T merger, Black Diamond, uh, Bank of America, Firebird, Liberty Mutual, Stone Harbor, Frank Stone Arch, TiVo, which, does that exist anymore? And Mylan Pharmaceuticals. Remember that EpiPen controversy? So <clears throat> that was really the thing that stunk, stuck out, uh, out, stuck out to me most from the emails. That was the biggest, biggest uh, revelation for me in, in Podesta Part 20, that massive memo that shows that asshole Doug Band um, and shows the Clinton Foundation and, and the Tenio Consulting, the overlap between those two companies. Also, you know what? Credit where credit is due. Chelsea Clinton was concerned about the overlap in those two companies and, and she, um, she did the right thing. So, so... Credit where credit is due. Uh, now we'll get to not the smaller emails, but just the other, other revelations. I'm going to be reading pretty much directly from Jordan's Twitter. Go follow him at Jordan Sheridan. I also do a little bit of coverage on this uh, at Emma Vigeland. Of course, a shameless plug for me. V-I-G-E-L-A-N-D. That is me. Okay. I, that was a rhyme. I swear I didn't come up with that first. Um, in a 2014 email, Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign manager, Robbie Mook, was strategizing with, a pres with President Obama's aide on who Debbie Wasserman Schultz should hire uh, to plan for the general election. So Robbie Mook uh, sent an email to, uh, to Huma Abedin, John Podesta, Cheryl Mills, so three of the top people, uh, four of the top people if you include Robbie Mook in the Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, and it says here, Oh, and also Hillary Clinton. I missed the H email because her email is just H. Just chill out, Hillary Clinton. Um, Madam Secretary et al., I had a good conversation with Simas today, so um, talking about the, the White House aide. Uh, a few things to report. He said Debbie and Amy, he's referring to Amy Dacey, uh, who used to be the CEO of the DNC, um, except we all remember what happened with her. Um, he said, De Debbie and Amy are supportive of bringing someone in to fill the general election planning slash pep prep preparation role. We agree that Jen O'Malley Dillon would be a strong candidate. So blah, blah, blah. Um, they were already, uh, President Obama was working as well with the DNC. 
Um, and it says he's meeting with Amy Dacey again on Wednesday. So, collusion with the DNC. It's less of an issue because um, President Obama is the head of the party as the president. But the fact that President Obama was also in communication with the Clinton campaign about, or not President Obama personally, but an aide of President Obama, <clears throat> was in uh, communication with the Clinton campaign while the DNC was making those decisions is just um, a, an indication of the fact that uh, the DNC wasn't neutral at all and that President Obama and the fluidity between the DNC, the White House, and the Clinton campaign was rampant. Here is another. Bernie Sanders campaign, I mean, uh, excuse me, Hillary Clinton campaign creepily, this is Jordan's tweet, took a photo of Bernie Sanders in a bathing suit and discussed, I don't know if they did, but discussed leaking it to the press. Ugh. Like, by the way, this is my objective journalistic opinion. Bernie looks good in a bathing suit. I really expected it not... Uh, it could have been way worse. He's got skinny legs. He's not overweight. He looks good for his age. So it was just, it, and it's also funny. I just like, you don't picture Bernie sunbathing, but, but Bernie, yeah, has started hashtag Bernie has nice legs. <clears throat> uh, nice liberal legs. It's all that Vermont brisk walking. So they send this picture in an email, which is just, are you children? Are you like in middle school bullying? Bernie at the DSCC retreat. And the, uh, Tim, uh, Tina Florney sends that picture. Brian Fallon responds, OMG. John Podesta responds, can we tweet? You're a fucking asshole, John Podesta. Um, and then Brian Fallon responds, I think we should give it to the New York Post. Classy, classy, classy people. Here's another. Hillary Clinton, Mega John Arhame, Saban, I can never pronounce his name, but he's... Uh, had a Univision, offers campaign joint Univision interview with Bill Clinton slash George W. Bush. So, um, he, uh, Tina Florney, same woman from the other email, says, Univision has a speech offered to William Jefferson Clinton. That is uh, via Haim Sabin. Saban. The event would be a joint with 43, meaning George W. Bush, and would be an interview conducted by George Ramos r regarding immigration. Proposed date is May 12th. I have reservations about it generally would not have, would have not accepted thoughts. So, glad that they didn't accept, um, but Podesta responds, actually, I'm okay with, with this, but we would need some prep. It shows that, one, I wouldn't even, like, take a fucking meeting with George W. Bush. Uh, he, I see him as a war criminal, but they just want to be buddy-buddy and hang out and do a joint interview and bipartisanship and Washington's so great. Look, we can come to this compromise. Corporatist Democrats, corporatist Republicans, screw everyone in between. Yay, 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 yeah. So, um, just another indication of the Hillary Clinton's, uh, camp campaign's willingness to appear by bipartisan, which has become screw everyone in between. Screw the American people. Um, and their willingness to just hang out with George W. Bush, which you would think would be a disastrous idea as he's one of the most unpopular presidents in history. So, um, here's another. Hillary Clinton campaign talks about having a transparency day and release transcripts. Fortunately, they, di fortunately, they didn't do that. And, uh, we got to read about them in WikiLeaks without their little spin. So... This was an email um, to all the top people uh, in the Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, and it says, Jen, I'll let you download the conversation you and I had about the concept of Transparency Day. This is for J uh, Jennifer Palmieri. Uh, my battery's going to die soon. Uh, but I, I took the opportunity to revisit my long-held belief that releasing the page speeches, transcripts, would be a gimme and contrary to a year ago she completely agreed so they were thinking about releasing it but they need to have a transparency day because they are never transparent um and, and lastly this is the most important one so because my battery's dying i really wanted to get this out there they said back in uh april 15th 2015 they weren't for the 15 dollars minimum wage um this is from ann o'leary uh who works for the hillary clinton campaign to almost everyone on the staff. It was about a tweet about Fight for 15, reacting to the Fight for 15. She says, I feel strongly 
that we come up with good language that doesn't use, use hashtag for 15, but supports workers fight. Leave to political for final call, but I think this is good and we should do. So, as we suspected, as we kind of knew, because she only begrudgingly agreed to it at, uh, after Bernie kind of held her over the fire at the DNC, wasn't for the fight for 15 wasn't for the $15 minimum wage until she's dragged, dragged, dragged by public opinion. You know, that's who we have. That's Hillary Clinton for you guys. So, all right, guys. Um, I think that is all really that is of note and my I'm on 20%. I really had full battery. This is, this YouTube app is really killing, kills your battery, but so good because I get to talk to you guys in real time. So, um, love you, YouTube. <laughs> Uh, have a great day, my friends, and I will see you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Make sure to check out our Disappearing Middle Class videos and uh, make sure to subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. We want to get to 100,000 by the election. Uh, it seems like it's very doable now, so please help us get to that point if you like the work that we're doing. Thanks, guys.